Okay, I think we uh, may be live. I uh, would just like to give a great big welcome to everyone who's joining us from around the world. It uh, is amazing that in this day and age we can connect in such a way, thank God. Uh, I'd like to welcome you officially to uh, Straight Kingdom Talk. Um, <clears throat> It's brought to you by Kingdom Hope Community, and uh, my name is Sam Tripodi. I'm from Helps Ministries. Now, I'd like to welcome Dr. Baruch Corman uh, from Love Israel Ministries. Thank you for joining us. Um, now, we uh, were going to be having Dr. Hill from uh, the Discovery Bible on, and he sends his apologies. Unfortunately, there was a last-minute clash and he's not able to be with us. But I'd like to say thank you to Brother Simon from the Discovery Bible team for joining us on such short notice. I appreciate you being here with us. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, that's uh, taking the time to listen in. I'd like you to think about, as we uh, go through our discussions today, any questions that come to mind. You may already have some. Hopefully, a number of them will be answered during the broadcast. And uh, we have someone who's uh, looking at the questions as they're coming in, and we'll try and get to some nearing the end if we can that perhaps haven't been answered. So please feel free to do that. Um, yeah, I'll just throw it over to you, uh, Baruch, if you'd like to give a, a welcome. And Well, let me begin by welcoming people from, from Israel. It's good to be in the land of Israel. Exciting times that we're living in, turbulent times that we're living in. And I think you're right. A great way to begin is through a, a time of prayer. So let's go before our Lord and Savior in his name. Father God, we thank you that you are, are our Lord and our Savior. We thank you that you are faithful. We thank you for the truth of your word. I give you uh, praise and honor this evening here in Israel. We ask that you give us insight and wisdom with the words that we share Mm -hmm. And that this time would be a time that you would be pleased with, that would indeed draw us closer to your perspective, that we might be not just uh, students of your word, but doers of your word. We thank the individuals that worked hard to set this up, and we ask that you bless them and draw us into your presence as we, we move forward in this time of discussion concerning how we should respond according to the circumstances and the world that we're living in in these coronavirus times in the blessed name of our lord and savior messiah yeshua that is jesus christ amen thank you baruch amen, amen. thank you uh you started off by saying <laughs> exciting and turbulent so i think that's probably describing the two ends of the spectrum about what's going on, isn't it? Um, it's really, uh, I think we're living in un unprecedented times with the coronavirus pandemic and probably arguably the church is facing one of its greatest, um, I guess, trials probably in the 21st century. Um, what is the climate right now, um, Baruch, in Israel? How, how, what's the feeling that's in the air there? You know, in preparation for, for this evening, I asked a few people, I was at the grocery store to, this evening, and I asked people in line. And the number one response that I got was metuskal, which is Hebrew, which means frustrated. Mm. In Israel, I would not classify the people as fearful. I would cause, classify them as very concerned in how the government is going to manage this and i also believe that the verdicts out i'm not a doubter that there's a coronavirus i'm not doubtful that people are sick from it and even people are dying because of it but how serious it is i i'm not so sure and i'm also very very uh interested in how governments are responding and if they're not making the situation much worse than the reality of the virus itself. Well, it's glad, I'm glad to hear that fear, fear is a, a very, um, uh, it's an awful thing. Uh, it drives people to do lots of, you know, lots of things that they wouldn't otherwise do. 
How about on your side, Simul? How are you seeing things and uh, the part of the country, part of the world that you're in at the moment? <laughs> well, it's good to be in your part of the world, uh, Sam. Uh, and over here in Australia, everything seems quite quiet, doesn't it? Uh, everyone is falling in line, happy to do what the government has prescribed, and it's quite uh, quiet here. Feels. Well, yeah, we're in Adelaide, um, and uh, we, we've done pretty well, um, you know, all things being considered, and almost life back to normal, it seems, but uh, our borders are still shut down, and in particular, you may have heard on the world news that uh, Melbourne is in what they call a stage four lockdown, and um, things seemed not too bad a number of weeks ago, and all of a sudden, uh, People are, you know, big numbers are coming out. Panic is setting in and government is, you know, setting forth lockdowns. And so it's that question, isn't it, Baruch, whether um, we react to these things in such a way uh, that though it may seem like it's bringing order and helping the situation, it actually um, can... Uh, you know, carry along that fear. If, if the government seems fearful and takes drastic measures, that fear can trickle down to other people. Um, let's 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 um, think about some of the, the Christian world, the community, the church is divided on this thing. Um, you know, we have people at both extremes. We know that, um, you know, we've had uh, in particular on the news of late, Dr. Uh, MacArthur's uh, stance and um, I actually watched his service that they had an inaugural uh, return. And there was many, many people in that service all happily sitting together, you know, against government orders and government regulations. Let's just, just to kick things off, um, any thoughts and views on, you know, what MacArthur's uh, shared and his point of view and uh, how he's going about it. And some, some people would say defying the government and he's had a, a number of very strong opponents and many of them in the church. Barry? Well, I, I'm not sure exactly what he's doing per se. Let me just say this. I think we should be meeting regardless. I don't know what the standards are in California but I do think we can be prudent. I said not too long ago in a, a video teaching that, for example, in most places, and we'll, we'll speak since he's in the United States, that they don't want uh, strong uh, populations coming together, large assemblies. So if you take that and maybe make it so a third of your members, the normal attendance, and have three services. Now, if you're accustomed to having three services uh, on the day of worship, then you can have nine services and maybe one Saturday night or two, you can adjust. But I, I don't believe that it means that we should just stop meeting. I think that's very, very wrong. You can be respectful of the government and still disagree, and you can be respectful of their policy, but not go overboard. We all know that people are in grocery stores together. People are different places together and protests, no problem. But if it's a religious service, then it seems as though the numbers have to come down. So I, I very strongly am opposed to just eliminating worship services and, and not meeting. I think we should be meeting, but in smaller numbers. Um, one of the things that I've found um, is that people believe that, you know, Zoom, uh, the, the stock price of Zoom has gone th Zoom through the roof because everyone's you know basically reverting to online methods and uh, many have said uh, online is fantastic you know some have, have even said you know I've got to know some of my uh, people better than I'd ever known them in the church and it got me thinking uh, Baruch that you're saying that people should adjust and you know if you've had three services have nine it's it's work isn't it and it, it requires people to really see the value in face-to-face -face uh you know uh, real life meeting as opposed to zoom and uh, it seems to me that people have really easily reverted to zoom like that, that there's been an easy transition across and many say well let's not worry about 
it, uh, we've got the opportunity, thank the Lord, through Zoom. And in my mind, um, you know, face-to-face -face meetings, the Bible talks about many times, greet each other with a holy kiss. Many times, you know, it also talks about the laying on of hands. And there's something that happens in a personal encounter that just cannot happen over Zoom. But when we so easily transition over Zoom, it makes me wonder what is happening inside the church with the fellowship that is going on when people can so easily leave it behind and move to an online scenario. Simo, any thoughts on that? Well, uh, it's... We know that the uh, gathering of the saints in Scripture um, did not happen over Zoom because Zoom wasn't available. But um, with technology, people are perhaps uh, looking to do something similar to what happened in the first century uh, or in biblical times, in Hebrew times. But um, I have found um, talking with friends and praying with brothers and sisters that meeting over Zoom is really not the same as meeting in person the way our Lord Jesus Christ described it and prescribed it. And as we see in the epistles, um, I had a, an encounter with a friend. Um, we were talking about heart-to-heart -heart issues um, that we were uh, resolving and um, iron sharpening iron. And we were exchanging over Zoom on one one and it didn't come across the way it needed to come across. Whereas in person, the experience was so different. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's laying on of hands, there's a touch. Um, the Bible talks about that, so yeah. Now, Baruch, um, you think people should be meeting. Um, you know, we um, sent along an article to you and there was nine, you know, one of the stronger uh, proponents for um you know basically se uh, being separated and not not gathering and you know a christian person basically you know one of the things they say this is not loving your neighbor you know we have uh, frail people in the church we have um you know you're, you're putting them at risk um what do you say you know i, th I think loving your neighbor is one of the biggest things that uh, people think that by us as christians saying it's okay to meet, we're not being loving. How would you respond to that? It's very odd to me that that not meeting is love and meeting, here again, you can use some precautions, but people are interacting everywhere. Now, here again, I've been limited to Israel, but people are going to the grocery store, people are going to different places, people are at work, they're interacting. And I don't see why it's acceptable to interact. And let me give you an example of something. In, in America, a, a political figure, John Lewis, who was very uh, uh, active and very much a leading role in the civil rights movement, he passed away. They had his funeral. I thought they did exactly the right thing. They limited to about 50% of capacity they still sung. Everywhere we're hearing different states, you can't sing, you can't sing, you can't sing. They sung. Uh, people were spread out, but still, I think it was about 40, 50% full. I thought that was using good judgment. I think that they showed mm. love for one another. So yeah. I think that this is simply being, being sidetracked by a lot of people who are being led by the enemy who knows that it's important for people to come together, to lay hands on, to, to join hands and to pray together and have fellowship. It's the enemy that wants to keep that apart. And, mm -hmm. and fear, you mentioned fear. There's two biblical words for fear. One is yerah, which means to give God the priority. And the other word is pa. Okay, uh, we've lost Baruch just for a moment. That was a, a killer That's thing. There you go. Okay. Rather, than, rather than the fear of the Lord. Okay, we lost you for there for a second, but we did get this, the, the essence of what you said there about fearing. I, I guess you're saying, you know, there's the fear of man and there's the fear of God. And, um, you know, it, it's easy to put it on the tongue, but when it comes down to it, at the end of the road at the end of the line how we 
actually live it out. That's what counts. And that's what really shows where our allegiance lies and where our fear lies as well. Just noticing one of the people in the chat said, you know, an obvious solution is those that are feeling frail um, recommend that they stay at home. Um, that's not unloving, that's being loving. And it goes back to what you're saying. Just let's be responsible. But let's give people the choice. The thing I think that is really getting up uh, most people's, uh, you know, really hitting the most is the enforcement of these things by the government. Now, you know, those that um, know that they're in a precarious situation, they, they can choose to be more cautious, stay home if they need to. But don't make it, you know, a one size fits all. Um, there's been lots of uh, proof to show that the measures that have been taken, that uh, all the lockdowns that have been happening haven't really curtailed the amount of people being infected. Um, and we just got to give people uh, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, people are not silly. The, the, those that, um, you know, let, let them be careful, give them the, the option, give them the opportunity to do what is right or to do something different, but don't enforce it on them. Simul, what do you think? Oh, yes. Uh, the scripture is um, very clear that when the law of God is concerned, um, we need to choose that um, over the law of man. And here is where there, there's a great debate. And we don't believe one size fits all. And that's where faith comes in. And we need to be persuaded uh, situation by situation. Like if someone is older and has got poor health and has got low immunity, yeah. they are not um, required to come unless they are led otherwise. <laughs> um, but for most people who are healthy and have a good immune system and they are taking care of themselves, they're eating well, they're sleeping well, um, et cetera, and they wish to put their life on the line, um, that is up to each individual's faith. Mm. And so, and the truth is our life is to glorify God mm. um, and how we choose to do that, we must really look in scripture, we must pray and we must seek the face of the Lord to mm. obey his commands. Yeah, you talked about faith and it's the individual. Um, one of scripture that just comes to my mind is in Philippians 2, 12 and 13, where it says, Everyone is to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. And one one writer in the article that we sent, uh, you know, talks about that. Uh, you know, often people will cite Romans, I think, thirteen, 13. and Titus, Titus three, is it? Mm -hmm. That yes. we must obey government officials. But you know, in the beginning, I think most believers were willing. You know, even a MacArthur in the beginning was willing to let's uh, let's. We're not sure how bad this thing is. We're not sure what it's about and the effect it's going to have. And now we're willing to stop things for a time. But then they said enough is enough. And, um, you know, we, we, we so value and treasure the meeting together. Someone asked about, you know, when is it right to worship, come together and worship and sing when the government is asking you not to do that? Um, and I think in MacArthur's example, uh, after they had time of prayer, they reassessed things. They felt that the time, the, the information that has come in has now said that we, you know what, we can meet. Let's take precautions. Let's be careful. The thing is, the ones that are saying we should not be meeting, it is unloving, etc. How long should we be okay with that? I mean, this thing can blow out, you know, to six, eight, ten months, a year and a half, two years. Is the church just going to sit back and be happy with online meetings for all that time? Or is it going to stand up? Now, people are not going to be happy with us doing that. We're going to have persecution. But in Timothy, it says, you know, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And so when is it right to and at the right time to disobey government officials, according to Romans 13 and Titus 3, uh, Baruch, what would you say to that? I think the greatest problem with those citations is that people only read part of those verses rather than all. Romans right. 13, they love the first two verses. And then it clarifies it that says that these government authorities that God has sanctioned, that he has ordained, 
are those that are there for good. They punish evil and the reward good. If they're not doing that, then God has not put them in place. So if you read only the first two verses, it says, you know, obey the government authorities. God's put them there. But it's for those that are following that which is good. And let me just simply say that there is so much unknown information about the coronavirus. You mentioned lockdowns. Our, our person who does our Spanish voiceover lives in Colombia. If you check, if you go to the World Health Organization and their count, you will find that Colombia has been soaring. They've been locked down since March. Very strict, much stricter than America, much stricter than other places. They have been locked down to the point that you can only go to the grocery store every other or every third day. You can only go out to do essential things once or twice a week. Very strict. And those lockdowns haven't helped. And we need to also understand there's an individual that, that comes on the Israeli news, and he's trying to get the statistics to see, well, you know, we know how many people supposedly died of the coronas, coronavirus. But in that, that month, last year, you know, there was people who died by heart attack, by cancer, by a whole bunch of things, and you have the total number. We want to compare the total number this year for the same month and to see hmm. how many more deaths there are that, that, you know, if there was in a city, 5,000 deaths, what last year, how many this year? I know in Finland that they've had less deaths this year due to coronavirus flu or whatever than they do in a typical year. So they've recorded less deaths. When hmm. you look at Sweden hmm. and some of the other countries, you've seen that the deaths that are coronavirus related are very, very elderly individuals. I know in Israel, they gave the first, you know, when someone died, the first hundred people, you know, their picture went up, their age went up. And we all remarked, 94, 97, 88. Now, there has been a couple younger people that died that had problems with their health, a background. But very few people I heard yesterday in America under the age of 18, 54 people died. All mm. throughout America in the first five, six months, 54 people under the age of 18, and the vast majority of them had other related health problems. Mm. Are we mm. making this into something much more than it is, all the attention? And, and I'll, I'll stop with this. But I strongly believe now in what we're seeing, that the government is using and testing how submissive are we going to be mm, to the authority mm, yeah. and how much can they get away with and just making rules and regulations that are being enforced? Do they have the power to enforce them? If you look at America in times of emergencies, but usually those times of emergencies and when they can make a law or a rule that they can be enforced are severely limited to a matter of, of three days, five days. Some are 30, depending upon the principality. And then the local government, the state legislation, can have time to, to, to go over this and make it whether it's a law or not. So much of what's being done today is legally not proper. Mm -hmm. It makes you wonder. Um, uh, we, we've got people making comments about this global, you know, it's amazing how all the governments globally have acted in one way and it you know you were saying there what what is the reason for this and it makes you wonder what the agenda behind all of this is and in many ways it's like a test run it feels you know what happens what will, how will the church react when something more severe happens and wisdom man we need wisdom from god to know how to navigate this because if we define if we wrongly define love our neighbor we're going to react in one way but i like what you said bro we only read part of the scriptures the love thy neighbor verse comes after loving god out of our whole heart soul mind and strength and when we're doing that that enables us to actually love our neighbor in the way that God is loving them rather than, right. 
it becomes God defined rather than neighbor defined. Simul? Yeah. It reminds me of, um, you know, how people say God is love and therefore love is God. And that is such flawed logic because mm. it's not a reversible truth. Because when we make love the same as God, then we get to choose that our love and our preferences and our um, predispositions get to define what God wants to do. And we make our own God and it becomes idolatry. And I'm very concerned for, uh, for myself and for my friends and brothers and sisters that unless they are really um, discerning the times and what God is doing in this generation and that ultimately God has authorized this to have come upon the world. It's mm. a time of testing. It's a time of proving what is in people's hearts. Mm. And unless we are really, um, you know, praying and asking God for his wisdom, um, we're going to follow our own advice and our own wisdom and follow the wisdom of the world. And as you said, uh, Baruch, uh, government is there ordained by God to enforce what is good and proper in the sight of God. Now, how that is defined, unless we um, are immersed in the scripture and we are giving mm. ourselves to the mind of Christ, we let the media, the news, define what is wise and unwise. Yeah, and, and that, is, that is so important. So the number one command, seeking God with all our heart, in order to know his mind, one of the things that has come up in our discussions, as you know, um, people have said, you know, um, this is a gray area. Um, we should allow, you know, cr Christians can have their own view on this. And I, I ask a question, Brooke, I wonder if this is a gray area in God's mind, because as believers, we are meant to seek one mind the mind of Christ, we are meant to come to unity together on these things. To say that uh, this is a grey area and therefore, um, if in doubt, stay home. That's It's a grey area. God has no real opinion on this. What would you say to that? Uh, my understanding of the scriptures is that God has got a yes and no judgment on things God has a specific thing that he wants, a specific way he wants his people to handle this crisis in order to be prepared and be ready for what is about to come. As you know, we know we are in the later times. But what would you say that to that, to Baruch, about this gray area? How should we approach that? I don't think in the scripture there's a lot of gray area. When yeah, I, I hear gray area, I think of lukewarm. Oh my I goodness. hear in the book of, of Joshua and at the end of the Torah and the end of the book of uh, Deuteronomy, it's about uh, uh, not going to, to the left or to the right, but in the right way, not mm. abandoning the truth of God. And what, what I see, and I, I hate to pick and name individuals, but I think sometimes it's beneficial. Now, I kind of pick on him a lot because I feel he's extremely dangerous, and I'm talking about a pastor who's one of the leader of one of the largest congregations in America. I'm speaking about Andy Stanley, not to be mm. confused with his father, but, but Andy. And he announced, I think at the beginning of July, that they were curtailing all meetings, face-to-face -face meetings, uh, their main Sunday morning, for the rest of of the year. Now, wow. I don't know what would, would possess, no pun intended, what would possess someone in July, the beginning of July, to make a decision, no meetings the rest of the year. We, we do a lot of traveling and we are not canceling anything until, you know, if, if we're allowed to, to, if people don't have to know ahead of time, we wait until the last moment, hoping that we can, in some way, it'll open up and we can do it. So I'm amazed that, that someone would want to, to say no services for the rest of the year. But you know what? He gets so much attention from the secular media. 
Mm. And he was so praised by that. And mm. I would just simply say that I have found a rule, and that is when the world praises and the world shines a spotlight on something, it's usually not the will of God. My, my. And therefore, I'm highly skeptical of, of such a, a pattern. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to put people down, but I think that's an example of what not to do. Let's hope that, that next, the next of a week we can meet and do even more, mm -hmm. not, and I think the reason for that is, you know, if you're excited about something, you don't want to cancel it. And, and also, I don't know, and, I, and please, maybe someone can correct me, but one of the primary reasons was not, I have scriptural admonition from that, I'm hearing from the Lord, I prayed thoroughly about it, but what I heard, not that he didn't maybe do those things, but he said that, that they would be forced to tra do all the tracing, if someone got it, to notify and do everything. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know anywhere. I've tried to look in Georgia law and Atlanta where the, the government can force a, a group to start tracing, making phone calls. I, I don't well, think that's true. I'll be happy the, to apologize and yeah. say I'm wrong, but I think well, that's false. It's all in the name of... Um, caring for our neighbor isn't it loving our neighbor and it comes back to that definition again what does that really mean you said if you're excited why cancel and it brings the question again to why have we so easily laid down our our rights as believers you know we we think about the church in china for example and other parts of the world where meeting is an everyday hazard and they risk possibly even their lives to do so. And yet we are seemingly laying down so quickly and so easily. Now, your point about if you're excited, why stop it? You know, Nanny Stanley has canceled services. A report, um, I heard Dr. Hill mention that uh, a Barna report said that 30% of uh, churchgoers will not be returning as a result. Um, after after this crisis, um, it, you know, that begs the question as the people in our churches today, the, you know, the easy, easy gospel, perhaps that is being preached and, you know, come one, come all. Where, where, where's the uh, the laying down of our life? Jesus often said, I laid down my life. And, and often he did not mean his physical life. He was talking about his soul. The word there is soul. He laid down his very being, who he was, his very personality for those that he loved. And we're called to do the same thing as Christ. Um, and, and another thing, you know, the Bible does teach, you know, beware when all men speak well of you. Right? Because that's what they did in the Old Testament to the false prophets. So... I just want to, we're coming sort of toward the end of our time and one of the big things is vaccines that I notice on the board here that people are talking about. Just a, a, a symbol from you, a quick thought. Do you have any, any opinion on, on the vaccine uh, situation once it comes out, once it's well, available, etc.? cetera? Uh, well, I think we're going to be vigilant um, and uh, not it says, it says in Proverbs 3 verse 5 uh, trust in Yahweh in the Lord and do not lean on your own understanding do not lean on the understanding of um, the government or uh, our neighbor or others who are not in scripture and praying uh, there may be people unfortunately that um, as you mentioned earlier uh, the body of Christ and many who are called believers are not always acting as believers or always speaking or reasoning according to the mind of Christ. So when it comes to the vaccine situation, um, we will have to wait and see what, um, what, um, what implications it has. For those who have got a good immune system, those who are taking, you know, uh, eating healthy, um, uh, having supplements, etc. there are different opinions even medical um, professionals uh, who are not going with the institutional, um, um, you know, way of handling things would say that you can um, 
take supplements, you can boost your immune system, and you minimize the risk of, um, you know, things going wrong. However, life <laughs> in this world, even driving a car is a risk. Mm. Um, and there's That's no vaccine awesome. for driving a car. <laughs> so we need to say, God, I need the vaccine against sin. Oh my, Not the thank you so much. Primarily against corona. It's really a matter of obeying God. Yes. And that's the only way to um, do this. So. Thank you, Simul. And, and uh, Baruch, on your side of things, how, how do you see the whole vaccine? Um... I, I never really thought about the vaccine. I know that people are working on it. Never really have thought about it. Uh, I don't know why. It just well, never entered my mind. Yeah. I tell you what did enter my mind is as we've been talking and, and sharing and some of the things that you've been saying, uh, Sam, is that the verse that came into to my mind was you've lost your first love hmm. in the book of Revelation. And, and I, if I had a word for the the congregations of the Lord, for the for the church collectively, is that I would be a warning. Mm. Are we walking away from our first love? Mm. And that's something that has end time implications. It says in the, the gospel Messiah's teaching, he says that uh, the love will, will of many will grow cold. And yes. love, as you pointed out, is related to the commandments. And we're not maybe so excited to, to do work for God, to serve him. And I think that really attested 30% if uh, that turns out to be true. I hope it's not, but I, I, I'm not surprised by it. That's where I think it is. Mm. People are leaving. It's, it's, the reason I bring up vaccines is that, uh, you know, people are saying all sorts of things that, you know, who knows what's going to be in the vaccines, what goes into making the vaccines. And we don't want to put all vaccines, as some people are saying, in the same category. In some parts of the world, um, you know, law has been passed where they can literally come into your home forcibly and enforce you to take a vaccine. And there are parts of the media and part, you know, certain proponents that's, you know, that kind of bringing up these parts of the world as an example of, you know, trying to say, look, look how well this country is doing. And, and the reason is, is that, you know, they've got a firm hand on, on, on their people. And so they're trying to use all these sorts of examples as, you know, heaven forbid, if I can use that word, that we should ever come into that situation where people can come into our home and forcibly make us take vaccines. But let me just say this, and we're coming close to the end, and I'm going to get a final thought. So as, just to have a think about perhaps the final thought on your heart that you really want our listeners to, to know about that God is impressing on you. But the thing with vaccines is this. You know, it may be, who knows, in the near future, be able to enter a shopping center unless we have got that vaccine. But let's think of the logic of this. If vaccine. Well, um, you're breaking up there, Sam, and your video is blurry, blurry. Okay. All right. Maybe our internet connection is a little, a little okay. choppy. You're, you're a bit better now. Keep going. Okay. So. The thing is this, if we just give people the choice to live out their own life and hopefully those of the church will use wisdom, you think about it. If, if I'm denied entrance into a, into a, you know, I can't buy and sell unless I take a vaccine. If the people in that shopping centre who are fearful have taken the vaccine, they're in no danger. If I enter that um uh, you know, that shopping center and decided not to take the vaccine and decided not to take the vaccine and enter that shopping center, who are they putting at risk? Not the people who have taken safe. They're only putting themselves at risk. So why, why would we ever enforce a vaccine? If a vaccine becomes available and you want to take it, take it, but don't enforce it on everybody else. You're only putting yourself at risk, not anybody else who has been willing to take the vaccine. So it really needs sound reasoning, sound logic, God's wisdom. Guys, let's not just fall in line and use this uh, idea that, you know, 
love your neighbor is the preeminent thing. The first love that you were talking about, Baruch, is for God. And you brought up revelations. Revelation, the churches of, of today are in grave danger of being like many of the churches in, in Revelation in the first three chapters. We've just done a series on Sardis, um, which we'll be putting online very soon. And, you know, Sardis, your deeds, you have a reputation that you're alive, but you're dead. And we, each of us individually and, and the leaders of our churches need to start getting on their knees before God and saying, God, what is your verdict? I don't want gray area. I want to know what's on your mind. What would you want me to do? And let's not fear man. Let's fear God. Let's be bring ourselves in alignment with God. Let's use sound reasoning, sound logic. Let's those that are frail stay home. So, look, just a final thought from each of you as we uh, bring this webinar to, uh, and and we'll look at some further questions. Um, uh, let's start with you, Sim. Or final thought uh, that's pressing on your heart that you'd like to get across to our audience. Well, I, I pray that everyone will keep um, reading the scripture and listening to uh, wonderful Bible teachers like um, Baruch. Um, Amen. Thank you. We love your ministry, Baruch. Thank you for teaching it line by line so we can know the mind of Christ um, yes, and even to know how to love because um, the world teaches a, a way to love that is not the way God loves. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his ways are higher than our ways. And a man, a man's way is not in himself. In fact, um, in the last days, um, there will be a lot of humanism. As I understand, um, you know, at the very last time when the mark of the beast is introduced, it may not be a literal mark on the forehead with 666 on it. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I wouldn't even resort to vaccines, as some would say, but it's actually the where love is God and the way the world defines because it's a number of men in Revelation 13 verse 18. And so we are going so drastically towards uh, humanism and globalism where the whole world is saying, if you really care, you're going to do what I care about rather than saying, God, you care about God and so uh, the number of men requires in order to discern it, it requires wisdom mm. and so we need to ask God we need to pray we need to read scripture we need to look for those who fear the Lord um, as you were explaining Baruch mm. fearing the Lord is way more important and it's the only way to fear everything else correctly <laughs> without the fear of the Lord there is no knowledge and we will make the wrong choice without that a holy fear. Thank you, just Simon. Think, thank you, Sim. I appreciate those words. Real, real briefly, just where would the world be if instead of fearing the coronavirus, avoiding it, taking all these precautions, all these dollars that are going into it, what if we we try to avoid sin? Mm. and invested in the kingdom of God and did this same effort, what what would be the the spiritual situation and the the physical situation of the world? We're investing in something that I think we're going to see in the years that was not that significant of an enemy, the real enemy, and this goes back to what Simmel said, we need a vaccine against sin and and it's available. It's called faith called the grace oh, of God amen. it's called amen. the Holy Spirit anointing us and walking in obedience to him that's what what Messiah that's what God the Father is looking for people who who want to avoid sin and cling to righteousness not those who are wanting to avoid corona so bad so that they cling to life in this world I think life in this world when when we can compare it with kingdom life we're going to really wonder why we valued life in this world so much mm. so i think we're we're, we're being deceived if the the enemy is a deceiver a father of lies and yes. i think we're being lied to in many ways concerning the times we're in 
Thank you guys for those wonderful uh, heartfelt petitions for our people. I, I just again, I'm going to ask a question here of the administrator of the webinar uh, who's administering things, just to see if there's any real uh, questions that we haven't dealt with that um, he's noticed there. Before I do that, so if you can be thinking about that, uh, Ethan, any particular, what's that? Okay, so we have some questions, but I'll just say this. Some, one of the things I did see in there is about, this is a, a sifting of the tares and the wheat. Um, so the thing is this, that um, fellowship, which is what we're really being, um, uh, it's, it's really been taken away from us, true fellowship where we can come together and reason together, where we, we can seek the mind of God together. We cannot do that the same over Zoom as we can do it one-on-one. -on -one. There are so many uh, cues that we feel. We feel God's power and presence and we feel somebody's persona uh, when we're together and we're able to better discern things when we're one-on-one -on -one rather than on Zoom. And so, so fellowship, and this is what this is, you know, it's divide and conquer in many ways. And if we just sit down as the church and allow this to be ongoing, uh, you know, it makes me think of the glory of God. The word glory in the Bible has to do with substance and it has to do with weight, the weightiness of God. And if God, the glory of God has to do with the weightiness and the substance of God, then the words of God in the scriptures must be given due weight, due value. And I think that for the most part, we read our Bible so superficially and don't take the words to heart. We don't actually take what is said all the way out where it needs to go. What happens, like you were saying, Baruch, if we avoided sin, what happens if we take God's word all the way out where it goes? What happens if we were to get on our knees and ask for God's mind on this situation? How might we act differently? So I encourage every individual to get on their knees before God. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Ask God for wisdom to guide you in these perilous times so that you are not caught unawares in the days that come because um, this is just a precursor to something greater. We know that from the scriptures and we must not get to that place unprepared. Let's take this as a warning sign from God to start putting weight and value on the scriptures, to know what he's saying, to really, uh, uh, you know, seek his face. Um, Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so we need to understand what faith is. We need to understand how faith operates and, and what that means. And, and, and wisdom is, 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 a, is part of faith, living in faith. And without wisdom, we will not do take the right road in these times. So that was my last and final thought. And thank you for all our listeners. And Ethan, is there any particular questions we should address just before we finish up that are really, really pressing? Well, yeah, there's just three or four to go through. Okay. okay just for the individual. Yeah, so how do we respond to government that opposes worship and singing? I think that that question um, by Anna, I hope that that has kind of been answered, you know, in general through the discussion that, yeah. Brooke, do you have any particular response to that or do you feel it's been answered in, 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 the, uh, in the way we've, uh, uh, you know, gone in our conversation today? very briefly i see people yelling things all the time in protests that's fine we can sing we can worship we can praise oh, yeah. god and if that means they want to carry us away and put us into the prison that's fine we'll i don't like think we should silence. shy away from from arrest i don't think we should shy away if they want to arrest people for for praising god i think this is just a sign of the times the um, one, one of the uh, people asking, you know, does the word of God give us the government we deserve? And I think we kind of, you know, answered that in, in, in a way that uh, we have to be we have to be wise in assessing the government. 
you know, if Ch the China church laid down everything to their government, surely that's not what God is calling us to do. And people will say, well, this is very dis different. This is for the good of people. And, you know, we just got to be careful with overall uh, generalizations about solutions to this problem. We need to get God's heart and mind on it. And I know one thing that God wants us to meet together. Fellowship. God, you know, God is a triune God. He, he He's in fellowship in the Trinity with the three persons. And that is a signal to us that without true fellowship, we are not going to reflect God truly. Um, so thank you to, um, yeah, that was Agnes asking that question. And one more, when, uh, when a vaccine uh, comes, are we, are we to get it? Honestly, I dislike vaccines and I'm against it. And I guess that question there, again, um, we, we we, we need the help of one another. We, we, we need to look to teachers that are really abiding in the truth and we need to reason together and we just need to be careful to make generalizations that say we should take vaccines for the good of the people for the, because people will, will think we're unloving. Um, we, we, we just need to use wisdom. Guys, if you've got anything to add to that, I think we've pretty well answered that. Um, one, one person that says maybe we're going back to the early church time and come together at homes. Now, thank you for that one there. And we'll, we'll take that as the last question. Um, I, I know that uh, coming together in homes, you know, maybe it's time uh, you're listening to this broadcast. Maybe it's time that God is putting on your heart for you to stand forward and to start uh, making a stand and perhaps offering yourself and your home for believers to come and to join together so that you can pray, so that you can read the word. And perhaps you don't feel you're equipped to do that. Well, through Love Israel, if you go to Love Israel as website, there's many resources there. As Simul said before, teaching line by line, many encouragements, uh, many things that you can learn that you can use in your fellowships. Uh, also, uh, the discoverybible.com um, has resources Everybody that's joined our webinar today will receive an email that will give you links that you can go to to um, provide resources that you can actually use in your home groups um, so that we can get you started. And if, if you need help, we are an email away. If you, if you are thinking about uh, starting a home group but feel that you have not got the capacity or, you know, all you need is love. That is true as long as it's the right kind of love, as long as it's God's love, as long as it's defined by God. And if you love God and you love your neighbour as God loves them and you want to take this opportunity, as this person was talking about home churches, we want to help you. So please reach out to us. Um, there's some wonderful resources there that are going to help you and, and help you encourage others during these unprecedented times. And would you mention uh, Kingdom Hope Community, Sam, for those who wish to get deeper? Yes. Um, now, we, we do have kind, kingdomhopecommunity.com, um, which is providing uh, resources and courses that you can take. Um, it's the early days of, this, uh, of these courses, and uh, we, we are developing more to put up there and there in conjunction between Love Israel and helps ministries that uh, are the producers of the Discovery Bible. And so we encourage you also, we might put that in the link that we send out if you'd like to check that out. Um, and, you know, um, we, we really want to be here for you. If we can help you personally and you, you would like to be an instrument of God in these last days and, and you, you'd like some help on how to go about it, please reach out to us. Well, look, I think we've come to the end. We've, we've gone um, probably longer than we had thought, but it, it seemed that it was a natural, this is a natural end. And I hope that everyone has benefited from the discussion. I'd just like to say thank you to Simul from the Discovery Bible, Baruch Corman. Thank you for all your support and for the many people that you impact with your ministry. Many of them who have joined us today, uh, we're, we're so grateful for our partnership. We love you. And 
we, uh, you know, uh, uh, we may not agree on every single detail, but we agree on the things that uh, are uh, a doctrine and that are important to God. And uh, we, you know, we we endeavour to come in this to the, into unity and into the same mind of things. And so we pray that you will uh, look out for the next uh, Straight Kingdom Talk broadcast um, and uh, invite your friends along. And uh, perhaps they may be able to get some of the answer, questions answered and, and also be encouraged in particular in these times. Um, Thank you. Thank you guys very much. And I enjoyed Simmel so much, much more than I'm sure I would have enjoyed Gary. So Simmel, thank you for uh, <laughs> being part of it. And Yeah, thank you, Simmel. And uh, Barik, you've got a wonderful sense of yeah. humor. We, we truly do um, did miss Gary on this call, but... Um, we we yeah. do thank you in God's providence that he um, he he's his micro providence and so you were meant to be on and Gary wasn't today. Thank you everyone. God bless yeah. you and we look forward uh, to seeing you again soon. Simul. That's right, and I'll make sure that we'll pass along something from Gary for those of you who've missed him. Yes. And um, we all love him and thank you, Baruch. We love your preaching and teaching, and look forward to hearing more. Amen. Amen. God bless you, you all. We'll right. catch you very Thank soon. You. See ya.